internet, it's Jonathan here. I'm here with Justin of That Christian Vlogger. I found his channel like a year ago when we were looking for other Christian YouTube channels and uh, his channel showed up. Justin, do you want to introduce yourself to the Set Sail audience? You yeah, know who you are? my name is Justin and I run a channel on YouTube called That Christian Vlogger and I make videos for young adults and my goal is to help not only uh, educate people or to teach people more about the scriptures, but just simply to demonstrate what life as a follower of Jesus may look like. And so I document my life as well and I share my experience and just the kind of things that I'm learning in my walk with Christ and I make YouTube videos about it. So yeah. <laughs> awesome. So I thought it'd be cool to discuss the whole thing of like vlogging, the internet, putting out this kind of content through a platform like YouTube, um, which is kind of crazy because like 20 years ago, none of this existed mm -hmm. and now it's all here and it exists and we can talk to people on the internet and you can watch it at home in your socks. <laughs> So, <laughs> hopefully a little bit more than just your song. <laughs> but yes, however you are dressed, we hope you enjoy. <laughs> One interesting thing I'd like to hear is like, how did you start, or like have the idea to start a vlog? First off, I started making video content just because I really wanted to ask my wife to marry, or my, 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 my then girlfriend okay. to, to marry me. And I thought, hey, okay. it'd be kind of cool to video that. You know, that'd be a nice keepsake. Yeah. And so I bought a camera, started videoing all that, and you know, nice. Later down the line, I uh, basically started making YouTube videos for ministry. But the reason why I started doing that is because I started getting into the YouTube space a little bit more and realizing that there are entire communities of people just online and it's, yeah. it's kind of mind-blowing. <laughs> and, and you know, there, there are literally people out there who walk around with just their cell phones mm -hmm. and like they just talk to their phones, but these people have a very real, tangible impact on the lives of young people. Mm -hmm. and I thought that's, that's so cool. What would it be like if we as Christians tried to leverage that uh -huh. to be able to share our message as well? I think I told you about this once, but like we were doing a bit of outreach at like a youth camp last year mm -hmm. and uh, we were at a skate park and like talking to some of the teenagers there and even some of the guys like had never heard of Noah's Ark or like basic yeah. like Bible stories or like but then one of their mates came up and they were like talking about this YouTuber they'd just been watching and like they'd all seen the same video and everyone like, already is on the same page watched, yeah. yeah similar ex experience I was in San Diego mm. which is not like a third world country by any shape of the imagination yeah. but I was in San Diego and I was actually giving Bible studies to this person yeah. and I was like oh yeah so let's turn to the gospel of Matthew and she's like what's a gospel what, who's Matthew and yeah. like had never heard the story like of anything and it was it blew my mind I'm like wow there there literally are people in today's day and age that just aren't familiar with that what we're what I'm seeing and I think what you're saying as well is that the internet is a very real way for that to take place and if you maybe aren't very familiar with like the internet culture and that sounds like really sketchy that sounds very far-fetched for you I mean you yeah. think about it I was just in, in Germany recently and I got to see you know some of the original Gutenberg Bibles and the, the kind of spread of Protestantism really was off the back of the printing press and one of the main reasons why Martin Luther's message and, and, and his his particular take of the gospel went so far is because there were this new thing called the printing press and you can now print it on books and give it to people yeah. and so you know Martin Luther was was using the the present day technology to, to spread the gospel. One of the, I guess, downsides of it being online is you don't always see like the direct impact because okay. our lyric video for Shepherd of My Soul crossed like a million views, which what? is like never expected we get that many. Awesome. <laughs> um, but like we get emails every now and then from people saying like, oh, I stumbled across a video on YouTube mm -hmm. and like it's exactly what I needed to hear at that time. Or like, like if that's just one person, like how many more of those kind of stories are around that we probably never hear. But, Absolutely. Um, I, I've gotten some messages from people like someone asked me, hey, you know, what do I do? You know, I don't have a, a church nearby. No one can take me or where the case is. Yeah. And you know, what what advice would you give me? So I was like, come on, dude. Like seriously, like you're just making an excuse. Like, go to the church or yeah. whatever, or at least call up the church and talk to one of the elders or the pastor. I'm yeah. sure that they'll be willing to pick you up. Yeah. And then they like responded again. And they're like, no, no, I, I live in a Muslim country. Wow. There literally are no churches at all. Wow. They might be the only Christian that mm. they know in like say a, a 50 kilometer radius or something like yeah. that. It's it's unbelievable that the message can literally permeate through every country in the world. Yeah. Do you ever find it like difficult to describe to someone like I am a vlogger or a YouTuber? Anyone from like 30 and under, especially if they're like in the 15 to 20 year old range, yeah. they, they know it. it it's, it's, <laughs> it's, it's not even normal, it's the thing that they want to do. Like I, I remember reading this post online that, that the, the most sought after career or dream job is to be some form of like a social media influencer or, or a vlogger yeah. because that is the kind of person that most young people are, are looking up to nowadays yeah. which is which is crazy because why are we as a church maybe 
neglecting that, that area. I just think it's important to have like the Christian voice in that yeah. context because yeah. like everyone's sharing everything. <laughs> yeah. like, uh, I think something like the average young person yeah. spends uh, you know, 40 minutes per session. Every time they open up the app, mm -hmm. they're spending 40 minutes at, at a given time on YouTube. Wow. And you think about it, if, if the Christian voice isn't present, then what are they gonna be watching? What are they gonna be listening to? Yeah. You could say, but aren't books bad? Like, well, yeah, there are a lot of bad books out there. There's a lot of bad yeah. magazines, but yeah. that doesn't mean that Christians shouldn't be in the business of writing or reading books. Mm -hmm. And I think it's the same thing yeah. for internet content as well. Yeah, definitely. I didn't know anyone that was a Christian that was actually doing vlogs or like a YouTube channel at all. And I found your stuff and I was like, yes, <laughs> like someone's doing it. <laughs> um, There's actually quite discover. a number of people. It, yeah. And it's really, it's really awesome to be connected with people like John and uh, the different people that are part of this Christian YouTuber community because mm. you have a lot of people that have the same vision. They, they see the potential. And the thing I love about YouTube as well is like, Anyone can do it and can get involved with it. Like literally, anyone anyone can start with it and just start talking to the camera, and yeah. it's so cool when people show up. Yeah, yeah. I think a lot of this generation are after like something that's real. And, no, like, yeah. Especially you grew up with the MTV reality yeah, television, yeah. which like, isn't really real. <laughs> this is not real. This is totally scripted. But, yeah, because I've heard people say like vlogging is like the next step of like reality TV. I'm like, I kind of see what they're saying with it, yeah. but at the same time, like. I really hate reality TV, but I really Hopefully like Hopefully it's a different category it, of yeah, reality. I guess it's the similar idea of like viewing something that's real life, but mm -hmm. I think it's more genuine and authentic by the fact that like it's made by the same person. Like, yeah. That's one of the things I love about vlogs and watching that kind of stuff. When I first started, I was uploading every Friday and I'd wake up with that pressure of like, what am I going to film this week? Because yeah. like, yeah, yeah, yeah. I need something that's really engaging and exciting. <laughs> and then I was like, it's kind of defeating the object to it being real because I'm yes. like trying to come up with something no, for the I purpose th of the video. I, I, think, I think that's actually really, really valid. You know, yeah. on YouTube, there's a huge pressure to make your life more interesting and more exciting than it really is, yeah. you know? And I think that that, like, one of the main reasons why I wanted to start doing YouTube was because it was going to be kind of a sort of journal for me. I can really document kind of my thoughts and my, my experience with God. Mm. But then, you know, it's easy to, to cross the line and now it's all, it's, it's for the viewer. And then you start becoming someone that maybe you aren't. And yeah. so I think that that's definitely a temptation. Yeah. Um, but I think the more you're grounded in who you are and you want to share life as it happens, I yeah. think that, that, that makes a big difference. Yeah, definitely. So 26th of June, we uploaded our first video last year. So we're coming up to like almost a year of the channel. Very cool. Um, so I was just like looking back through some of the episodes and like some of the early ones, I was just like, oh, I forgot we did that. And like, yeah. we did that live show in such a place. And like, and this is actually a spiritual practice that, mm. that, that Christians have done for, for ages. You know, the, the famous song, Here I Raise My Ebenezer. Mm. That, that, that Ebenezer in the scriptures is uh, a rock of memory. Uh, so basically what would happen is like the, after they would go into a territory, God would do something amazing. They'd build an altar. They'd raise up an Ebenezer. So that way when people would pass through that area again, they would be reminded of what God did in that location. Yeah. And so this is in a very real sense, like a, a modern day Ebenezer, mm. where you can actually go back in your life. And so you highlight some of the things that God has done in your life. Yeah. And a year from now, 10 years from now, you look back on like, oh my goodness, I totally forgot that miracle that God worked in my life. Yeah. And so it's, it's a really cool way to kind of revisit those things and, and to really appreciate what God does in your yeah. life. I used to get really confused by that song. <laughs> what is that? I was, that? Like, what the... I was like, do I have an Ebenezer? Or, like, I didn't bring one with me. Like, <laughs> what am I holding? What, what do I bring? <laughs> yeah, it's good to like put that stuff out of like, this is what God's done in our life. So I'm just intrigued on like the practical level. Uh -huh. How do you like fit that in your week? Is it like film and edit the same day? Do you like try and get some ready beforehand? And, like... Yeah, you know, I wish I could say that I was a good planner, but I've, I've never been. I'm, I'm, a, I'm a procrastinator. And so, yeah. you know, on my channel, I've kind of committed to my audience that I would put up a video every Monday and Thursday, 10.30 yeah. Pacific Standard Time. Nice. What I find myself doing is on those Mondays and Thursdays, on many days, is uh, waking up at like four in the morning to, to, to shoot, edit, yeah. upload, all that kind <laughs> of stuff. I need a video now. Right, right. Yeah. But, you know, sometimes it's nice to have that deadline because because then it forces you yeah. to, 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 to do it. But where the videos really come out the strongest is, is when I put more time and energy into it, of course. Yeah. Um, and it and it's less of a less of a, a forced mm -hmm. video yeah. and it's much more of like you know what I've been noticing this trend for the last three four or five days this is what kind of God has been sharing with me these are the themes that have been arising up in my life more regularly yeah then 
then that's when it's more meaningful. That's when it, I, I feel like it tends to do better. What would you say to someone that might be watching this, might be considering starting a vlog or like a YouTube channel? Do you have any advice for people that might be starting something brand new? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Well, what, what I would say is it's, it's super important to kind of be in tune with what God is trying to do through you. Because yeah. I didn't necessarily think of the vlog for myself. It was, it really was something that I felt like, man, God it was over the process of weeks and months calling me to do, which is a very yeah. weird thing because you never hear about that, right? Like, that's not something that you're in church and someone stands up and gives that testimony. Yeah. Um, so the broader thing I would say is rather than doing vlogging or maybe even doing music or whatever it is that, because you know, sometimes we try and fit Christianity into one particular box. And these are the things, if you want to follow God, you have to become a priest, you have to become a minister, you have to become a musician or a missionary. Like, that, that's all you get to do. Yeah. But, but I really believe that God is calling people in many different areas of life. God might actually call you to be a teacher. He might actually call you to be a lawyer. He might yeah. actually call you to open up a restaurant or to be a businessman. Yeah. Mine just happens to be that he was calling me to make videos on the internet. Yeah. <laughs> and what I would say as a lesson from that is that, you know what, the, the inner, like, the happiest I've ever been in my life mm -hmm. has been in the moments where I've decided to, to have the courage to follow after God. Yeah. In my situation, I had to quit my job to do it. And that's a very scary thing to do. And I know that your, your story is rather similar being yeah, yeah. A, a, a music missionary Scary well. moment. <laughs> yeah. And, 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 and there's so much like, that you have to kind of weigh, but I, I have without a doubt found every moment that God has called me to do something that the moments that I choose to follow it, that has been where I've been the most fulfilled, the most happy, the most excited about life. Good answer. Awesome. Um, I don't have a sign off. Maybe I need a sign off. Well, you should probably think of that. What should it be? So, so, oh, I have that. <laughs> Every <laughs> time that goes on, I, I sing along with it. So anyway, thank you for watching. Thanks, Justin. Um, go subscribe to his channel if you've not already. And if you want to see some more of his face, we're probably gonna, we're going to be doing a video together for my channel. Yes. And uh, you can check out that one as well. Goodbye, people. <laughs> Set sail video blog, set sail video blog, it's a video, it's a blog as well, set sail.